I'm here in Taylor's Flat, some 40 kilometres north of Boorowa in rural New South Wales. And I'm here to see a man. Rarer than a sighting of a bunyip, drop bear, and Leo Sayer rolled into one. I'm here to see an emperor. You've come to the right place. Welcome to Atlantia. Here I am in the great city of Concordia, capital of the inland micronation of Atlantium. Micronations are self-proclaimed entities that claim to be independent sovereign states, but which are not recognised by existing sovereign states. There exists over 80 of these across the globe, and Atlantium is the smallest in Australia. I never thought I would be whining and dining with royalty, it was everything I imagined it would be. So, Imperial Majesty, George II, Emperor of Atlantium and first among equals, how did this come about? Uh, well, it's a long and tortured story, which I'll try to keep, try to keep as brief as possible. Um, my parents, when I was a teenager, perceiving that I was a, an intelligent child who had an interest in politics and society, um, encouraged me to, uh, to participate in the, the world around me, maybe to become involved in politics. Uh, I actually went off and started my own country. I think they weren't expecting that bit. Um, so we raised a flag, my cousins and I, in my backyard. We painted a border on a corner of my mother's house in suburban Nawi in southwestern Sydney. And uh, nearly 40 years later, here we are with a territory that's half the size of Monaco and twice the size of the Vatican. There are various monuments around Atlantium. You have a pyramid, a foundation stone. What are the meaning of these? Many, many years ago when I was a teenager, I was actually drawing these monuments uh, and, and imagining how I would like Atlantium to be physically in the real world. Uh, because it was never just a, a, a fantasy, it was always something that we really wanted to make real in, in, in the actual world. Um, so we have the Pyramid of the Dawn, which is the only pyramid in Australia that you can actually go inside of. There is one in Queensland, but you can't go inside that one. Uh, so it's a four metre tall pyramid at the top of a hill that can be seen from miles around. It's our constitution monument. We have a column from which all distances in Atlantium are measured. This is called the Capitoline Column. That's a Roman style column in the middle of Founders Square. We also have a uh, Founders Monument up the hill slightly with a few flagpoles in front of it. And uh, currently that represents most of the, uh, the monuments. So this is our capital. We call it Concordia and it's a ceremonial place. And eventually there will be a coronation here. There will be a coronation? There will be. 38 years and I've not been crowned officially yet. So I can't call you emperor? Oh yes, I'm definitely emperor. Yeah. The, the, well, the, the title exists, the, the position of government actually exists, um, but I just haven't had an official enthronement ceremony at this point. I understand you've got your own number plates, is that right? Yes, yes, well we've got uh, 1.5 kilometres of imperial highways within the borders of Atlantium here. We have two roads, the, uh, the Golden Way and Concordia Way, which is the main entrance. So yes, we have our own number plates for vehicles that are driven exclusively within our borders. I can respect the mythical roots of Atlantium. Named after Atlantis, Plato's fictional island state, adversaries to the ancient Athenians. The state fell out of favour with Poseidon who sunk the island to the bottom of the ocean. Latin is the official language of Atlantium, and so it only makes sense that many of the country's monuments are named in Latin too. This affords a link to the culture in which the nation's institutions are founded. The Roman liberal ideals of human rights, civil liberties, and political freedom. As fascinating as this place is by itself, it's not the real reason I've come here today. Apparently, Atlantium is also a hotspot for paranormal activity. Now, I understand a few weird things happen here. It's probably in the number of weird things that happen in, in a country, this is the most dense of those. Tell me three things that, that are weird things that have happened here. Uh, look, I, I've been either visiting here or, uh, or um, you know, emperor of this particular part of the world for, for about 20 years. And over that time, there's been a handful of odd experiences that I've, I've been, uh, been party to. Um, uh, I guess the, the, the weirdest of them, to my mind, is, is seeing a, a vehicle, a van, drive up uh, Concordia Way uh, very early one morning. Uh, with, uh, with high beam uh, directly facing me and then simply vanishing in front of my eyes. 
Um, this vehicle was completely silent. Um, there was the next morning no evidence that a vehicle had come up that road. Uh, there were no tyre tracks, there was no other evidence that anything had ever happened, but it was very, very um, apparent that there was something there at the time. But that's not the only weird thing that's happened here. Uh, look, there's uh, another another experience uh, that I uh, that I had uh, a number of years ago, where I was um, in the middle of a driveway, uh, just admiring the stars uh, in the middle of winter on a very clear, perfectly still night with not a breath of wind, and uh, from somewhere behind me, um, a, a, a piece of rock uh, was thrown. Um, it landed. It passed through the air. It landed directly behind me. I estimate about a meter or so behind me and then rolled off uh, into one side of the driveway. And uh, I turned my, my torch on, I sort of flashed it around, there was nothing there, there was no other noise. The third weird thing that, uh, that I've experienced, and this one was in broad daylight, um, I, I saw what I believed very momentarily. Uh, in broad daylight, middle of the day, in summertime, um, a, uh, the, the body of a, a miner, uh, a ni what I thought was a 19th century miner, um, with a very long beard, sort of very similar to ZZ Top, um, and he was standing from the waist up uh, in the ground next to the main building. Just very momentarily, blink and he was gone. Um, and that's the third thing, and, and you, know, I, I, you know, by way of background, this particular piece of land actually was a gold mine back in the 1860s, and it was later a tungsten mine in the 1920s, so there has been mining activity in this area. So are you scared being out here by yourself? There's not many other residents of, of Atlantium. When, when you're by yourself, are you worried something from the paranormal is going to come and no, hurt you? No, I, don't, I don't particularly think so. I'm, I'm obviously aware of the, the story of the Yowie that, uh, that chased uh, a group of three men um, back in the 19th century down towards Wangra, and that's only 50 kilometres from here. But uh, in my personal experience, there's been nothing that I've felt personally threatened by, uh, of a paranormal nature at least. Now, Atlantium has its own uh, government system with, with, with uh, official institutions, is that right? Yes, just like, any other, uh, just like any other sovereign state, we have ministries and directorates and, uh, and departments that, uh, that administer various uh, different portfolios. So yes, absolutely. Right. So what do you think about the idea of perhaps establishing a, an official bureau of paranormal investigation here? Well, given that we're an apparently a hotspot yeah. of uh, paranormal activity, that's probably a good idea. Uh, we probably need to make you a citizen though first. How does that happen? We go up to the monument and uh, you take an oath and I give you a certificate and we're in business. Shall we? Let's. Congratulations, Tim. You can now visit Atlantium whenever you need to. And if anything strange happens, I know who to call. All in all, it's always an enjoyable and enlightening experience meeting with Emperor George, who, like the Yowie, the Drop Bear, or Leo Sayer, seems to defy classification. I often wonder what the future holds for Atlantium. I just hope it doesn't suffer the same fate as Atlantis. If there was one man with the persistence to make it not just work, but propagate and flourish in the new world on the horizon, I think it's the man who started it all. His Imperial Majesty George II, Emperor of Atlantium and first among equals.